بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now, one of the things that th there is out there right now is there's this, there's two books on the New York Times bestseller list right now. Dawkins, The God Delusion, and the other one is Sam Harris, a Letter to a Christian Nation. Now, as for Mr. Dawkins, basically what he does is he takes the best of science and says, look how great we are, rah, rah, rah. And he takes the worst of religion and he says, look how horrible they are, boo, down with religion. You know, not really fair. It's like putting a 90-pound weakling in with Muhammad Ali in the boxing ring and, 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 and watching him pound him to a pulp. That's not fair. If you, if you want to put Muhammad Ali science, or really he should be religion, but if you want to put Muhammad Ali science in with religion. You have to find the George Foreman of religion or something. Just there has to be some parity or compatibility. Science is has a lot of good in it. It also has a lot of bad. We tend to forget there's a lot of bad science in the world. For instance, uh, there was a move in the United States in the early 20, uh, 20th century, in the 1920s, to basically sterilize poor people because they were seen scientifically as unworthy of breeding. That, that was a scientific theory. That scientific theory manifest in the Nazi movement because the Nazis believed in the science of eugenics, that they were actually a superior race. And they believed that the Jews were an inferior race. That's science, that's not religion. So Dawkins doesn't talk about that science. Science is only what's good and what's wonderful and what's, for instance, uh, science creates things like agricultural systems that work like now we can put uh, potassium and we can put phosphates into a chemical mix and instead of allowing land to rest, they used to have crop rotation and, and allow uh, land to rest, have a period of rest so that it could, they'd let the animals come graze, they would defecate, that defecation would restore uh, the, uh, the soil to its, its natural and uh, fertile nature. So science comes along and says, hey, you know what? We can replicate what the animals are doing. So let's put some potassium, some phosphate, put it together, put it in the soil, and we can just farm all year long. Well, then we find out that the topsoil is eroding all over the world because soil is not being allowed to rest. It's like having a woman pregnant all year long for 20, 30 years. How, how, how's she going to feel? So science has its downside as well. Now religion has its downside also, but it's just, it's kind of an unfair fight when you take the best of science, the worst of religion, and, and write a book about that and just say, hey, religion's the, uh, the, science is the answer, religion's evil. Sam Harris, another person, uh, gee, isn't religion horrible? It's caused all these wars. Well, gee, what was the 20th century? World War I? Was that about religion? Wasn't that nationalism? World War II? Was that about religion? Wasn't that fascism? All the Cold Wars? Weren't those about communism? Communism's anti-religion. So the 20th century, the bloodiest century in human history, is all wars that weren't fought about religion. They were fought about ideologies. So I think the problem is a human problem. It's not the problem of religion. Humans are the problem. So religion's okay. We need to get rid of all the humans. <laughs> Actually, what we need to do is humanize these people that are walking around bipeds that are supposed to be behaving like humans and often are behaving not like animals. I don't like to discredit animals because I think it's unfair, again, to say, you know, he's behaving like a dog or he's behaving like a pig, or he's behaving like a, a lion. I, I, I think it's unfair to the animals to do that. You know, when you take the worst of human beings and compare them to animals. Because animals are just being animals. Humans 
on the other hand, are not being human. So whatever you want to call them, they're, they're certainly not behaving like animals. They're behaving like demons. So I think that's a better, if you, if you want a, a good uh, metaphor there, it's, it's better to call them demons. That, that's demonic behavior. It's not animal behavior. Animals are, are creatures that live within their own limitations. And I've never seen a dog that didn't behave like a dog. I've never seen a cat that didn't behave like a cat. Never seen a pig that didn't behave like a pig. I've never seen a donkey that didn't behave like a donkey. I've never seen a rabbit that didn't behave like a rabbit or any other animal. But I've seen a lot of humans that don't seem to be behaving like humans. So it's unfair to call them animals because animals are just being true to their nature. The question is, are we being true to our nature? That's the question. And religion says no. And you know why? Because God expects a lot more from you than you expect from yourself. So, if you want to ask me, I would say it's not our religions that have failed us, Sam Harris, Mr. Dawkins. It's we that have failed our religions. Thank you.